Hi everyone in the world of cloud computing, IoT, AI and fintech. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. Here are a few news highlights from this week in the fast moving world of cloud computing. Thank you all for your support on social media about last week's news and please remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and with your colleagues. If you have any cloud news media submissions, please email us at media at nelsonhilliard.com. This week, the world-renowned physicist Stephen Hawking has warned that artificial intelligence has the potential to destroy civilization and could be the worst thing that has ever happened to humanity. At a technology conference in Lisbon, Portugal, CNBC reported that Stephen Hawking told attendees that mankind had to find a way to control computers. Computers can, in theory, emulate human intelligence and exceed it, he said. Success in creating effective AI could be the biggest event in the history of our civilization, or the worst. We just don't know. So we cannot know if we will be infinitely helped by AI or ignored by it and sidelined or conceivably destroyed by it. While AI has the potential to transform society, it could be used to eradicate poverty and disease, for example. It also comes with huge risks. Society, he said, must be prepared for that eventuality. AI could be the worst event in the history of our civilization. It brings great dangers like powerful autonomous weapons or new ways for the few to oppress the many. It could bring great disruption to our economy. This week, Volkswagen Australia looks to Salesforce for IoT or the Internet of Things. Chief Customer Officer Jason Bradshaw told Salesforce's Dreamforce conference that when he joined the group in late 2015, he inherited separate and disparate business units and a contract centre that quite frankly was in a mess. The board in Australia made the decision to bring all these disparate groups under one umbrella. The group's fast expansion of Salesforce is no accident. It likes the ties between the three cloud products and the idea of giving its staff and dealers context in real time. One of the reasons we went with Salesforce was because we wanted to make sure that the system got out of the way of our team members delivering an experience to our customers, he said. The easiest way to do that was to have a seamless integration between all three major systems in our organization. It also means if we trained you on one, we don't have to spend a lot of time training you on another system. There seems to be another leak in the Amazon. This week, AWS bolster S3 security following massive information leaks. Amazon Web Services is working to shore up the security of its simple storage service following a string of sensitive information leaks by customers who inadvertently left their data buckets open to the public. Just last week, a researcher discovered 50,000 records belonging to a handful of Australian government agencies and several private sector companies sitting exposed in an S3 bucket. From today, S3 will now warn users with a prominent indicator if the buckets on the storage service are publicly accessible. Customers can now specify that objects in the S3 buckets must be stored encrypted without having to formulate a policy that rejects data at rest in clear text for compliance requirements. Three options for the server-side encryption are also being offered by S3 objects, with the keys for the default encryption managed by either S3, the AWS KMS, or by customers themselves. AWS S3 will also provide a detailed inventory report, which can be encrypted, that shows the encryption status of each object in the data bucket. The new security and encryption options are available for free and can be enabled via the S3 management console. This week, a crypto bug strikes and hundreds of millions of Eurythium gets frozen. Hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Eurythium cryptographic currency are at risk after a user triggered a software bug that gave them ownership of the wallets containing the funds. Eurythium software developer Parity Technologies overnight issued a security alert for critical vulnerabilities in its multi-signature wallets. The vulnerability stems from a fix for an issue in the wallets that appeared in July this year and which saw some $39 million stolen from three victims. 
Parity Technology said the fix was faulty and allowed a user going by the moniker DevOps 199 to accidentally lock away over 900,000 units of the Eurythium currency from 71 multi-signature wallets. Eurythium is currently trading at 386 Australian dollars, which means the total value of the incident could be as high as 347.4 million Australian dollars. It appears the software bug allowed DevOps 199 to turn the Eurythium smart contract that governed the multi-signature wallet into a regular wallet address and become the owner of it. DevOps 199 then suicided the contract for the wallet. Parity said, rendering all multi-signature contracts unusable since their logic was inside the library for the wallet. According to Parity, no funds can be moved out of the multi-signature wallets that have been affected by the bug, and it is unclear at this stage if the issue can be sorted out with a software version upgrade for Eurythium, or a so-called hard fork. NBN Crisis, as 42,000 users will be compensated by Telstra for slow NBN speeds. The Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, or the ACCC, today revealed that Telstra had offered to reimburse customers on the Fibre to the Node, or FTTN, and Fibre to the Building, or FTTB, NBN connections, who got nowhere near their promised maximum speeds. Telstra admitted in May that thousands of NBN customers were sold broadband plans with unattainable speeds. The telco's offer of compensation applies to customers who purchase the super fast speed boost plan from either Telstra or its belonged subsidiary on the FTTN or the FTTB NBN connection between September 2015 and this month. ACC Chairman Rod Sims said, Many of these customers not only could not achieve the maximum speeds, they couldn't even achieve the top speeds of their next tier down. Rod Sims said, in essence, people were paying more to get higher speeds that they just weren't able to get. We will continue to investigate other retail service providers selling broadband plans over the NBN and take enforcement action where appropriate. As we've said previously, we expect RSPs or retail service providers to provide consumers with accurate information up front about the internet speeds they can expect to receive and then deliver on those promises. Our message to retailers is that if you advertise a particular speed and customers cannot get that speed, you will risk breaching the Australian consumer law. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard, Cloud Computing Recruitment Specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, FinTech and AI. I hope you enjoyed watching this week's Cloud Computing News. Remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and your colleagues. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn and find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Until next week, be good, be safe and keep our clouds secure.